So I, I had orientation today because I'm going to be volunteering at the shelter where we adopted the girls. Oh. So I will be doing, you know, cat socializing and some cleanup and helping feed them and, you know. Well, that's nice. Yeah. And it's not entirely an excuse for you to play with, like, mounds of kittens and puppies. Just kittens. Just it's kittens? All cats. It's all cats? Yeah, and a lot of a lot of senior cats actually, because they are they they call themselves a cat sanctuary more than a shelter, and they'll take cats that are considered unadoptable and just let them live there, live out their days there. It's no cages. They have several like large rooms with towers and stuff. They have a patio that the cats can be outdoors. Like it's cat heaven. So by, by unadoptable, you mean cats who no longer give anything even resembling a fuck. Yes. For instance, there's one cat named Olive whose back legs are paralyzed and she drags herself around on her butt. And she has to wear a diaper and she's so mean and I love her. <laughs> she's so mean. But she greets you at the door and you can scritch her until she bites you. And then she runs off and hisses and growls at all the other cats that live in the lobby. But they take in cats with that are FIV positive, that have serious illnesses, you know, that are disabled, that might not ever find a, a home in a home, but will be very happy and well loved there. And there's no cages. They all get to roam around and play. And it's a really nice place. That's neat. And also it's an excuse to play with the kitties. Yes. Kittens of all ages and sizes. And then I get to come home to my little Muppets. Dottie wants attention today. Hello. Now, I know that look on her face. That is like, I have no care about what you want to do. I want to be down on the floor because something is happening down there. You smell the salmon, don't you? Yeah, I smell something good up here. Dottie has the nose of a bloodhound. I'm pretty sure she's part hunting dog of some type. Here, is that what you want? Oh, yeah, that's what I want. Here, 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 come up and get it. Now my fingers will smell like salmon for the rest of the night. And I love you put it up there so she'd be displayed on camera. She immediately stole it and ran away. That's that's what Dottie does. I we we're thinking she must have been the runt of the litter, because she is very fiercely protective of her food and toys, and will growl at you if you come like if you come near her while she's eating, if you come near her while she has her favorite toy, you will get growled at. So and she's smaller than Peggy is. So we think she must have been the runt of the litter and is used to fighting for her shit. Small people are assholes. That's that's the mo that's the No, the, she's the a sweetheart. There. She's just ferocious and very protective of her shit. Well, it is that time again. We have all sorts of horrible oh god. This this is one of those weeks where it's just like Yeah, you know, some of the stories are kind of a lull sometimes. This week no. No, none this week. Just every every kind of just boom, 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 boom. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here, and we'll send what we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And um, we're starting with another one of those God, this keeps happening stories. I'm starting to believe that, that this stuff has just always been happening, but we just weren't aware of it. We weren't paying attention for it. Like, it, this this has happened so many times, this must be like an unspoken social custom that we just weren't indoctrinated into for any for, for some reason. So, of course, if it's if if you get out of the out of the hospital and it's too late to take the bus, what do you do? Call Uber? No. Call a cab? No. You you steal a fucking ambulance. No, you don't do that. <sighs> Again with Maybe the There's no more salmon in there. It's empty. You ate all the salmon. Woman faces charges this morning after police say she stole a running ambulance parked outside a hospital. Lisa Carr, 43, old enough to know better. Definitely old enough to know better. 
was taken into custody several minutes later after a short, low-speed pursuit. That must have looked hilarious. The cops chasing the ambulance. <laughs> that would have been very confusing to other motorists. I... I uh, what? That's not how that's... I mean, either way, you get the fuck out of the way. So... Ms. Carr stated she took the vehicle because she missed the last bus. It's not a zip car! It's this... God! I mean, maybe you didn't have money for a cab or an Uber. What? But you definitely don't have money for the lawyer you're gonna need. No, now. it's gonna be way more expensive than Uber, even during the surge prices. Well, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> it is Uber. But, God damn, it just... I wonder, you know, I wonder if she put that much thought into it. I wonder if she w looked and said, hmm, this is Uber surge price. This is how much a lawyer costs. Hey! I'm going to steal the ambulance. Might as well make it worth it. Might as well make it worth it. Baby, there's no more salmon. You ate it all. She I doesn't. know the package still smells like salmon, but you ate it all. She doesn't understand that. There has to be more. It's because fish is disgusting and... Spreads its stink all over everything forever. So, why? How is... Uh, is this a thing that we just don't know about? Is this like planking or I mean, something? Apparently it's a thing we do know about. Because we keep well, fucking getting it. No, you can't be on the desk. Is this like, you know, like... Like, step on a crack, break your mother's back? Just one of those unspoken things that gets handed down through generations? Because it happens... An ambulance because... Is it just like socially acceptable, but we just don't aren't aware of it? How does this keep happening? People are stupid and horrible. Because ambulances, it's not like if you, stealing someone's car is bad enough, but you steal an ambulance, you are killing somebody potentially. They yeah, need I mean, at least clearly the ambulance had already dropped somebody off at the hospital. Yeah. So you didn't kill that person. But they probably were going to need to go back out for somebody else. And if you are in it, they can't go get them. They might die. Right. You asshole. You are a horrible person. Like, I'm sorry that you didn't have a ride, but that's not a good excuse to maybe have somebody die. Yeah, but she, she had to get home to catch up when everything was on the DVR. And what did you think was going to happen? Like... Did you think you were just going to return it the next day? Like, what was your end game there? Were you just going to keep it? Were you just going to keep it? You think they just give you one of those? <laughs> You're going to have to park it outside your house. They're going to find you. Now I'm, now, I'm seriously thinking of the, like, pimp my ride, like, put rims on the ambulance. It's mine now. No, they're, they're, they're not, hydraulics. Sure those are all GPS chipped. Each mad. Get the hydraulics to go in tune with the siren. I feel like an ambulance would be too big to have the hydraulics. Can you make a hoopty ambulance? You can, you can make a hoopty anything if you just try hard enough. You have to believe. Good to know. Next one comes from Canada. Mississauga. And, okay, I will freely admit this. When I was a teenager, I was a little shit. When you were a teenager, whether you like to believe it or not, you were a little shit. Teenagers are assholes. There's every, no way around it. Every single teenager, even the great, even Jesus when he was a teenager, was a little shit. Running away from his mom and preaching at the temple and shit. Baby, there's no more salmon. It's over. I'm sorry. But in this case, this... Normally, your your shittiness is sort of contained within your family unit, but this in this case, no, they had to, they had to spread it. Mississauga teen calls nine one one after parents forced her on vacation. Oh no! Mississauga teen was cautioned by the Ontario provincial police provincial police after she called 911 last Tuesday to complain that her parents forced her to go on vacation with them to a rental college east of Toronto a rental cottage east of Toronto
Look, I know being on vacation with your parents isn't always fun when you're 15, but that does not constitute a police emergency. Nor does it constitute a kidnapping. No. Like, it sucks. I, I'm sure there's many things you would rather be doing than walking around with your dad in his Bermuda shorts and socks and sandals reading signs at the nearest national park. I, I get it. Can you just picture that 911 call? It's like, um, hello, like 911? Yeah. We, like, go to this cottage and there isn't even Wi Fi. And there's no Pokemon here. Help. <laughs> You know, it's and this isn't even like a millennial thing. This is totally not a millennial thing because every teenager of every generation yeah. will do this. However, normally... You can't even help being an asshole when you're a teenager. You just can't. It's, it's in your DNA. Well. I just never thought to involve the police in my no. shit. I was... No. I was never of the mistaken impression that the, the full force of the law should be on the side of my argument. Yeah. Like, like, Forced to be on vacation. Boy, that's that's rough. <laughs> Can we get your Dawson's Creek ass out of here, motherfucker? <laughs> I mean, they were in a cabin. I don't I don't know Toronto that well, but like if they were like camping. I'd be pretty upset too. But they were in a cottage. Yeah, I had I had to go on vacation with my parents when I was younger. Um, my mom loved loved Gone with the Wind and all that sort of southern plantation mystique. You know, yeah. just let's just quietly ignore the slavery part of that. Um, she took us to Atlanta one year, and Atlanta has like. I forget what it's called. It's it's this uh maybe Dan has heard of this. It's it's this um sort of sort of like a diorama in the round that ha that's like shows that like the burning of Atlanta and civil war battles and and the, and my mom was so excited to go because they made one of the Confederate soldiers look just like Clark Gable in Gone with the Wind. Oh. And she was determined to pick that one out and take a picture of it. And if that sound, imagine how exciting that would sound. Yeah. To a fourteen-year-old. There's some museum that I heard about it on NPR. Their whole thing is they do very elaborate Civil War dioramas in miniature, all over the place, like Ben Horn's office in season two of Twin Peaks. Except all the soldiers are cats. They call it Tales of the Civil War, T-A-I-L-S. And this is their thing. They, they craft these giant miniature Civil War battle things. But all the soldiers are little cats in very, like, intricate, appropriate uniforms and stuff. That's what crazy people do. I know. I don't. I don't know how that idea comes to Sk you. Skunk train the tram and uh, the channel play. It's called the cyclorama. It's in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah, the cyclorama. But even then, even be even if you made me go look at tiny little Civil War cats. Hi, kitty. Even if you I'm made queen of the world. E even if you made me look at tiny little Civil War cats, I still wouldn't call nine one one. Right. Because that's not an emergency. It sucks. Yes. Well, let's go from kids being kids to dads. This this is like one of those dad moments to the extreme. Like like square cube times a Googleplex. Hmm. Yo, we all have had moments where our, our dads have just not been hip and down with the modern kid stuff. This is one of those times where it just sort of kind of exploded. And I could not, when I first read this story, I'm laughing already just thinking about it. I could not stop laughing. Because it is it is amazing. It It's... Dad mistakenly eats kids' pot brownies. Oh, no. Nebraskan, 53, crawled on floor, called cat a bitch. 
Well, look, maybe that cat's a bitch. <laughs> August 17th, Nebraska man mistakenly ate some of his adult children's pot brownies, told police that he was, quote, tripping as he crawled on the floor, randomly used profanities, and called the family cat a bitch. According to the incident report, why was that an incident report? <laughs> that just sounds like a funnel. Way to <laughs> cops say Michael. Did the cat call the cops? <laughs> cops say Michael Golan, 53, ate four pot brownies he found in the back seat of a car that his children had borrowed earlier four. Tuesday. Um, Is that a lot? I don't know. I've never had pot brownies. I don't know either. Around 7.30 p.m., Golhead's wife told Omaha police the couple were watching television when Michael started getting bad anxiety. She tried to contact her children to determine what was in the brownies, but failed to reach them. While paramedics responded to an overdose, they found Golan's vitals in the normal range. Michael was displaying odd behavior, crawling on the floor, calling the cat a bitch, randomly using profanities, and saying he feels like he's tripping. It's the calling the cat a bitch. <laughs> I'm so just imagine, imagine your dad suddenly stops watching TV and gets up, crawls around on the floor and starts screaming profanities at the family pet. <laughs> I mean, except for the crawling around on the floor, I had seen that. <laughs> Often scream profanities at the family pets. <laughs> and the one time I saw my dad really, really drunk, all he did was ramble on and on about the merits of clean sand. <laughs> what? My dad worked in construction, and um, apparently clean sand is the most important thing. I, I don't know. I'm just he had a lot of Manhattans at my cousin's wedding. Oh yeah, yeah, hello, please. Oh yeah, my husband, she he's not doing so good today, don't you know? Oh no, he's <laughs> well. He's calling the family cat a bitch. I'm, and I'm, she's not. She's the sweetest cat. Oh, she's just a, just a great big old sweetheart. Oh, you know. Oh yeah, she's. She, oh yeah, she's she's just That's a sweet. That's real controversy that he's been pretending to like this cat. <laughs> <laughs> he's been hiding his seething hatred for this cat all this time, and now it's out. <laughs> Over. They're getting to the truth of the matter. He has revealed his hatred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't don't leave your pot just laying the fuck around where your parents will find it. Especially if your dad just like, oh brownies, you got it, you got it. Drug laced fake goods where your parents can find it. Because I get to, my dad's routine every night before bed. We always had various Entenmann's products in the house. And he would have like an apple turnover or a piece of coffee cake and then go to bed. So God forbid we left some shit like that around like. You kept scraping your dad off the ceiling with a rake. Also, my mom was a substance abuse counselor, so we would be in shit. <laughs> <laughs> it would um, not be a fun day at the Dinahan house. Oh, well. Let's move right along to Florida. Oh, fucking Florida. There are some things in most parts of the nation that you just don't have to tell people. They kind of know it already. It's instinct. And then there's fucking Florida. Things you shouldn't have to tell people anywhere else, but in Florida, you do. For example, stop spray painting the birds. Oh no! Florida officials are asking residents to stop spray painting birds. Look at that poor bird! Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission is asking the public to stop painting birds, specifically the white ibis. The bird is protected in the state of Florida, and painting them is not only illegal, it's cruel and can cause serious damage. Yeah, that shit's toxic! Do you know how animals clean themselves? <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. I mean, birds, I don't know, not so much, because they usually go in water, but still. Last July, Florida Fish and Wildlife had to remind residents to stop painting turtles and tortoises. We, that, I got that story. That was Hi, a... predators. Yeah, let, let's, let's show you that one, because we had a picture of that, too. Wildlife is generally the color they are for an evolutionary reason. 
Yeah, Doesn't it's they blend into their environment so that they don't get eaten. Yeah, look at that. They paint the damn turtle bright fucking red and bright blue. Which you may as well just feed them to something. Yeah, and also... Why would you paint a bird like that bright orange? Why would you... What's the point of that? It's not extreme makeover. Is that like... Is that how they do graffiti in Florida? I... You know what? You're doing it wrong. Because up here you develop a tag, <clears throat> kind of make a logo for yourself, and you paint that on the side of bridges and shit. Is... It, <laughs> Iron Caster. This is not how Splatoon works. No, it isn't. I... It's... Anywhere else in America, if you had to go, if you went on television and, and told oh, people what doctor says, the Ibis is the mascot of the University of Miami and orange is one of the school's colors. You're horrible. This, Not you, Dodger. You're wonderful. This was a football thing. This, this, Maybe. this was a fucking football thing. Look at that poor bird. Any Isn't other orange? Any other state in the nation. If you went on television and said, we'd like to remind you not to spray paint the birds, everyone would look at their television a little funny. Like what what? Why would we do that? But in Florida, they'd be like, oh man, damn. I, just gotta... I did when I was a kid try to convince my dad to color the tails of the squirrels he caught. <clears throat> My dad had an elaborate ongoing war with the squirrels. So he'd set up traps in the backyard and he would take a Ritz cracker and put peanut butter on it and then tie it down with a twisty tie because the little fuckers figure out how to get it without. <laughs> and then he'd take them to the state park and let them go. But the state park was only like two miles away. And I'm like, dad, you have to take them 10 miles or they just come back. And he never believed me because what do I know? So I always said, like, look, let's just get some colored hairspray, nothing toxic, just mark their tails, and I will prove to you that they come back. And he never let me do it. <laughs> but I was right. Well, that I, you actually kind of make sense with that. Right. Like, it was for a reason. I was going to use the kind of stuff that once it rained would just wash off of them. Leave, leave, the, poor, leave the poor damn bird. Leave the poor damn bird alone. Poor bird. That's bullshit. Leave the poor damn bird. God damn it. And for foot, fuck your football. Fucking fuck. Ew. I mean, well, my college <clears throat> mascot was the Pioneers. So <laughs> maybe in Connecticut they're harassing pilgrims? I don't know. Well, before we get to the final horror this week, we have some stupidity that actually worked out for the best. Oh. This story made me so happy. Monkeys? No, actually. Oh. Close, but no. Usually when you're happy, it's monkeys. <clears throat> I want to point out, everyone in this story did the, except the, the idiots, did the right thing, nobody was hurt, and it all worked out fabulously. So that makes this one even better. But this is just some world-class stupid, and I love it. Some A lot of the time, people's stupid is inflicted on us, and it makes our lives worse, but sometimes their own stupidity Make shit easier on us. And that's what happened here. Robbers get locked in New Jersey cell phone store. Crowd watches and laughs. Oh, Jersey. When a pair of armed robbers barreled into a cell phone store in New Jersey demanding money and phones, they clearly didn't realize how quickly the manager would turn the tables on them. The armed men boost into, uh, burst into a Boost Mobile cell phone store and held up the manager. He did what he was told. Um, I say, check the walls, take whatever you want. So while they were busy, I ran to the back. That's when Torres got smart. He opened a back door that connected to another office, told everyone to get out, then went out another door from the space and slammed the gate there, blocking the back exit. He then went back to the front of the cell phone store and did the same thing from outside. And they didn't notice any of this? They didn't notice any of it. I mean, that's a genius manager. That's a smart dude. Get your people out and lock up the idiots. But even better, everyone outside could see the idiots. So now you have a zoo. You have an idiot zoo. You made an idiot zoo. It's amazing. <laughs> you made a fucking idiot zoo. 
It's like the imbeciles on display. And they called the cops. The cops showed up. Oh, they called. Yeah, they called the cops. The cops showed up. Oh, okay. Well, they, they managed to bust their way out, but they were on camera for the whole time. So they have full footage of all of their shit, everything they did. Cops are looking for. I love just you try to rob a store, and instead of what you intended to do, everyone is pointing and laughing. They all see your face. You're on TV. Your ass is good. Yeah, and think of how much you could actually get away with from the register of a Boost Mobile. Yeah, because most people don't pay for that sort of thing in cash. No. Even the prepaid shit, they're using a card because they have right. to. They have to sign up. They have to put in their information. Nobody's. I guess the real money is in stealing the actual phones and reselling them. Yeah, but they have the serial numbers on all those, so they can just. If someone tries to. These guys didn't notice themselves getting locked in. <laughs> it's <laughs> for the Nobel Prize in thievery. All right, let's. We're not dealing with the fucking Ocean's Eleven crew here. <laughs> Yeah, they're not like planning the shit out beat by no. beat. They're not, they're not master criminals. They're not stealing an electromagnetic pulse device. No, no. They're... Just so you guys know, don't steal cell phones, not just because it's wrong, but because they can disable a cell phone by serial number if it's reported yeah. stolen. And then once they have your, once you try to uh, activate it on a network, they have a GPS in the phone. They know where you are. They can brick it and they can find it. Stealing cell phones is idiotic. Now, I don't know. Do the prepaid ones have that? Yeah. Even at all of like them. the burners? Yep. They have serial yeah. numbers on everything. They have to scan them. That's part of the, the they have to scan them. They have to, because the serial number on the phone is what they use to activate it on the, it's called an uh, IM API. Gotcha. And it's what they have to activate it on the network with. And if that one's marked as bad, and this happens on eBay all the time. If it's marked as bad, you, it, the phone can't do shit. People right. try to sell them anyway, phone can't do you shit. got yourself a fancy paperweight. Yep. Now that was a fun story, which braces us for our last story. That's such a Jersey thing. <laughs> oh, this, okay. This is... If I was ever out and about and I saw this occurring, I would probably go home and not get out of bed for a week. I would just stay in the bed and be like, fuck, fuck it. I'm done with, with, with humans. I'm done with them. <clears throat> and I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure everyone else here, if you were personally witness to this, you would have the same response. Man arrested for trying to have sex with Van. Oh. Well, wait for it. Police arrested a man Tuesday night after a witness said they saw him trying to have sex with a parked van. Officers were called to Tuesday to a report that a man was pulling his pants down and swinging on a stop sign. Police arrived in the area and found a man walking, uh, only wearing black gym shorts and shoes. The reports say the man, later identified as Michael Hansen, Henson, appeared to be intoxicated. Officers put him back in the back of a police car and spoke with a woman who called police. She told them she saw the man standing near a parked van. She went on to explain she saw Henson pull down his shorts, place his genitals in the front grill of the van that was parked on the street. The woman said he did this for a while that appeared to pass out in a nearby yard. So either this gentleman is not very well endowed, uh. or his dick is kind of shredded right now. Because <laughs> car grills are not spacious. <laughs> and look- Or are they known for their soft round edges? Look at this fucker's mugshot. He looks like if I know you don't watch Preacher, but if you like put Cassidy and R's face in a blender, that's what you get. And he looks just he looks so happy, pleased with himself. Oh, well, he's drunk as fuck. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got laid tonight. Did you get laid tonight? 
You fucked a van! Yeah, but I got laid. The least sexy of cars, by the way, next to the El Camino. I know. Really? Yeah, well, is a van the least sexy? No, well, yeah, a van's the least sexy because I was about to say a minivan was less sexy. But then vans have that nasty... I'm going to trick you in here with some candy and do some horrible yeah. things. So they have that nasty connotation. At least this I maintain that the El Camino is worse just because <clears throat> whoever thought up that car. Why? <laughs> it's like a pickup truck, but car sized with no. a Mopar design. Fuck you. No, it's not. It's the ugliest shit ever. Yes. Just. God damn it. And I could just imagine this. Real, go for the exhaust pipe. At least it's the right shape. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the, you might as well just take a cheese grater to your dick. Yeah, seriously. I mean, maybe that's what you do at home. Yeah, man, I'm just, I got there something. I'm just imagining this poor lady who called they the cops. Specifically made metal rods to shove up your urethra, so maybe that's the kind of thing you're into. I don't know, but leave someone else's car out of it. I, I'm just imagining this poor lady. She calls the cops. And she had she sat there and watched this this grown ass man stick his dick in a van and then pass out in the yard. If I saw that, I'd be like, "We're done." Nope. We're done. I'm, I'm done with this species. Really, this is this is what we've this is what we were here for. All right, we have hundred thousand years when we first got ourselves upright and figured out civilization and talking and writing and then the wheel and then the and all of that has led to this then the combustion engine then the car then mass production a car at every yard we did all that just for your dumb ass to come along and stick your dick in it i'm done with this shit because and I'm, I'm already, I'm, it's, it's one thing to talk about. It's another to have to watch that shit. I don't know. I think that would have been really entertaining, actually. Watch some drunken moron shred his dick on the grill of a van. I'd be, I'd be out in a lawn chair with cocktails, like, even commentary. Oh, apparently all the El Camino people are mad at me. I don't care. They're ugly. And you have bad taste. The El Camino? What, what? There's a fucking El Camino fandom? They're stupid looking. A, an El Camino. I don't care. An El Camino fandom. An El Camino. Uh, I think the first thing we learned this week is don't fuck cars. Look, there's instructions on the internet for how you can make your own fleshlight out of, like, wet paper towel and a condom and a paper towel tube. Even if you're broke, you can make yourself something to fuck and not have to fuck somebody's car. Wait. How did... How do you... Why do you... I think Gawker taught me that, actually. Oh. See, they were useful. Oh, uh, we've learned that if you're going to attempt to rob someplace, you you must be this smart to ride, pretty much. <laughs> okay, if you they're still at large for so. now. You really think these guys are going to be like you know, like like the guy who jumped out the back of the fucking airplane he hijacked and disappeared? Oh, D.B. Cooper? Yeah, these guys think th th these are not, this is not the next D.B. Cooper here, okay? I don't think we're looking at the next crime of the century. They robbed a Boost Mobile and then disappeared forever. No, they're going to find these motherfuckers. We've learned nowhere else in the country need this be said. Don't spray paint the birds. Leave the birds alone. Please, wildlife is not your personal hipster art installation. Florida? Leave the wildlife alone. Florida, leave, leave the fuck, leave the birds It doesn't alone. want any of your shit. We've learned if you have, conf if you have special confections and uh, a dad, 
you might want to label that shit. Otherwise, he's going to verbally abuse the pets. The poor cat. <laughs> poor kitty. Oh, cat's, the cat's like, the fuck did I do? What did I ever do to you? Did, what's your ass doing on the floor, buddy? You know better. It's one time. <laughs> God damn. We've learned all teenagers are little shits. Yeah. Just don't, it, don't spread, if you're a teenager, you shouldn't be watching this, but if you're a teenager, don't spread your shit outside your own little bubble. Keep it in your bubble. Keep your shit in your bubble. <clears throat> get all your shit, put it in a bag, get it together. At least the cat didn't eat the brownies. Well, you yeah, good point. And finally, we've learned ambulances are not rideshare. Mm -mm. You cannot have. You either call Uber or you start walking. Yeah. You don't know. Why, why would you? Someone's going to die because your dumb ass has got the ambulance. And you can't keep the ambulance. No. It's not like it's you can't borrow that shit. You can't. It's not like I claim it. It's mine now. And that that is not a possession as nine tenths. I would like I would like to strangle the man who came up with the, the phrase. And you know it was a man. I'd like to strangle the man who came up with the phrase possession is nine tenths of the law because everyone's fucking an idiot about it. That one and the customer is always right. Hmm. Whoever came up with that shit right at the top of my list. 